welcome all today we will discuss five lemma we will prove this lemma in the category of modules but this lemma it can be stated in many other categories also here is the statement so we consider some collection of r modules and r module homomorphisms and we have a diagram like this so it is given that this so its diagram is commutative and by commutativity i mean you come this way or you come this way both are same and each row is exact and we have these five module homomorphisms r module homomorphisms then this lemma is saying that if this first map is surjective and this second and fourth maps are injective maps then the middle one that is also injective okay so we will see a simple consequence of this lemma at the end uh, and how can we use this lemma uh, that also we will discuss but let me first prove this uh, statement and and this is the first part of this five lemma and let me just prove it here so we should prove that f3 it is injective so since it is module homomorphism it is enough to verify that kernel of f3 it is trivial so let me pick something from the kernel of f3 so suppose it is x3 and if you apply f3 then it is zero so we just need to prove that x3 is zero now the question is uh, so we are here at this point so starting from from here where can we go just by chasing the diagram so these are the natural flows we have then starting from here if we come this way we are getting zero nothing new so we should come this way so then if we apply phi 3 so it is phi 3 of x3 and then we are here at this point so from here either we can go this way or we can go this way so if we go this way then it is uh, we will get zero because it is coming from x3 and so uh, we cannot use that but if we come this way let me see what we get so what it should be so here we should use that this diagram is commutative so if we come this way then it is zero an image of zero element it is it should be zero so if we come this way then it is zero so if we come this way then that also should be zero so here image it should be uh, zero because this diagram is commutative and next we should use uh, the hypothesis that this map it is it is one one it is injective map so since this element is there in the kernel of f4 so this element it should be zero and therefore we are getting that x3 it is going to zero via this map so x3 is there in kernel of phi 3 since this row is exact kernel of phi 3 that should be same as image of phi 2 so there exist some x2 in m2 whose image is x3 via phi 2 so next uh, we, we should see that where can we go starting from this point so if we come this way then anyway it is x3 we cannot so no use so we should come this way so if we come this way it is just f2 of x2 and again we should use that this diagram is commutative so image of f2 of x2 via psi2 that should be 0 because starting from here if we come this way then it is 0 therefore if we come this way we should get 0 so we are getting that this element it is there in the kernel of psi2 so here we can use the fact that this row is exact so in particular it is exact here so kernel of psi2 that is same as image of psi1 so there should be some element y1 in n n1 whose image is f2 of x2 via psi1 and here uh, so we are here now then where can we go 
from here. So if we come this way, then anyway it is uh, this thing, no use. So question is, can we go in this opposite direction? Answer is yes, because this map it is subjective, it is given. So for this element, we should have a pre-image. So there should be some element x1 in m1 whose image is y1. And next, we should see that we are here now, where can we go from here? So, if we use this map now, it is just giving, uh, this is phi1, so this is phi1 of x1. So there is no guarantee that phi1 of x1 is same as x2, but in this case we will prove that this phi1 of x1, this element is same as x2. So starting from here, if we come this way, we are getting f2 of x2. So if we come this way, then also we should get f2 of x2. So since this diagram is commutative, we are getting that image of phi1 of x1, that should be this one. Okay. So then this map, it is f2, it is f2. So we can see that both the elements phi1 of x1 and x2 are going to f2 of x2 via this map. Since f2 is injective, it is given. Therefore, x2 that should be same as phi1 of x1 as f2 is 1, 1. We should use this thing now. So x2 is same as phi1 of x1. Then what should be x3? Our ultimate goal was to prove x3 is 0. So can we conclude now that x3 is 0? Yes. Since x2 is same as phi1 of x1, so we have equality here. x2 is same as phi1 of x1, therefore x2 is coming from x1, from this point. So x2 is there in the image of phi1, therefore x2, is, x2 should be there in the kernel of phi2. And therefore image of x2 via phi2 that should be 0. And we should conclude that this element that should be 0. So that is the proof. So here we are proving starting from an element of the kernel of F3. We are just proving that that element is 0. So kernel of F3 that, that is trivial and hence it is injective. And next we should see the second part of this lemma. So uh, these hypotheses uh, are same. And here in this case, we just have to uh, prove that this map, it is surjective provided that these two maps are surjective and this last map, it is injective. So we should prove that, that F3 is surjective. So we should consider an element in N3, let's say it is Y3, we should find a pre-image here whose image is y3 via f3. So we are here now, again the question is where can we go starting from here. So we have natural flow in this direction. So via psi3 we are uh, going to psi3 of y3. Since f4 this map is subjective, so from here we can use the fact that, that given hypothesis that this map is surjective, therefore there exists some, I should write x4, some element of m4 whose image is psi3 uh, of y3. And so now we are here at this point. So where can we go? So here we have natural flow in this direction. So if we go uh, in this direction, we are getting V4 of X4 and then what should be the image of this element via this map, F5, this is F4. So I claim that this should be 0, why? Because uh, if we come in this direction, we should get 0, 
Why? Because image of this element via this map psi 4 it is 0. Because this element it is coming from y3. So, this element it is there in the image of psi 3. Therefore, it should be there in the kernel of this map psi 4. Because it is given that this row is exact. So, we are getting that in this way we are getting that image of this element via f5 it is 0. So, this element it is there in the kernel of f5 and it is given that f5 is injective. Therefore, this element it should be 0. Now, once this element is 0, we can see that this element it is there in the kernel of this map. So, this map is 5, 4 since this element is 0. So, it is there in the kernel of phi 4 and again we should use the fact that this row is exact now. So, since this element it is there in the kernel of phi 4, it is it should be there in the image of phi 3. So, there should be some element x3 whose image is this one, I should, yeah, this one. And so now we are here at this point, where can we go? So question is, uh, if, we, if we go in this direction, is it y3? So no guarantee that image of x3, it is y3 because it is given that this diagram is commuted. So if we come this way, then we, we, we will just get psi 3 of y3 because if we come this way, we are getting this. So, there is no guarantee that image of x3 is y3, but we have to find some element whose image, we have to find some element here whose image is y3. So, so far we have not used the fact that adjective it is given. So, starting from here, where can we go? So, here we should, uh, we should come in this direction. So, if we come in this direction, this map is f3. So, it is just f3 of x3, there is no guarantee that f3 of x3 it is same as y3. But if we take their difference, y3 minus f3 of x3, if we take their difference, then its image under this map psi3 that should be 0. Because image of y3 it is this one and since this diagram is commutative, so, image of this element that also should be psi 3 of y 3 m. So, their difference it should go to 0. It should go to 0 via this map psi 3. And next we can use the fact that this row is exact. So, the, since this element it is there in kernel of psi 3. So, it should be there in image of psi, uh, psi 2. So, there should be some element uh, I should I should write y2 whose image is this element via psi2 because this element it is there in the kernel of psi3. So, it should be there in the image of psi2. So, there exists y2 in n2. So, now we are here at this point. Now, we should use the fact the hypothesis that f2 is surjective. Since f2 is surjective, there should be x2 whose image is y2 via f2. So, it is it is on to it is given. So, there exists x2 in m2. So, we are here now at this point. So, from here now we can go in this direction. So, if we if we come and this direction. So, this map it is phi 2. So, it is just phi 2 of x 2. Okay. So, there is again there is no guarantee that and this element it is same as this one. So, only thing we are getting that starting from here if we come this way then it is this element this difference. So, if we come this way, then also we should get this element. So, this element that should be this. 
So I should write that image of this thing that should be this difference. So now, so our ultimate goal was to find the pre-image of Y3 here. And now we can see that image of X3, it is F3 of X3 via this map. And image of this element via F3, it is, all, it is, it is this difference. So what should be the pre-image here? So I claim that if we take just X3 plus V2 of X2, then what is the image via F3? So it is F3 of X3 plus image of this element via this map, it is just this difference. So it is Y3 minus F3 of X3. So this is Y3. So this is the desired pre-image of Y3 via this map. And therefore, each element has a pre-image, namely this one. So F3 is surjective, provided F5 is injective and F2, F4, these are surjective. Uh, that will complete the proof of this second part. And so here is a consequence of five lemma. So this we call short five lemma. And here uh, it is just a commutative diagram with two short exact sequences. So each row is exact and each row uh, is a sort exact sequence. And we have uh, a map from this sort exact sequence to this sort exact sequence. And by a map I mean it is collection of morphisms like this. So that this diagram is commutative. So we have a commutative diagram with exact rows and then using five lemma. So this is just zero module. So from zero to zero we have zero map. Okay. So then using five lemma, we have that if these two maps are injective, then that will imply that middle one that is also injective. Because these two maps, these, these two maps are surjective maps. So we can use five lemma. And similar way, if these two maps are surjective, then that will imply that this middle map that is also surjective. And therefore, if these two maps are isomorphism, then we have this middle one, it is isomorphism. 